Welcome back to our channel, Best Anime Series Recap. Today I'm going to explain part 2 of the anime series titled Violet Everguard. Violet heads over to the military headquarters to confront Diet Fried about the truth of Gilbert's fate, and he confirms he is dead. Still in denial, Violet travels to Gilbert's mansion, where she finds his grave. Back at the post office, Hodgins leaves to go look for Violet. Violet then begins to recall her past with Gilbert, which started when Diet Fry transferred her to his command as a child soldier. Despite his desire to raise Violet as a normal girl, Gilbert is forced by his superiors to put her on the front lines due to her astounding combat abilities. Violet proves to be instrumental in winning many key battles. During this time, Gilbert gave Violet her name and taught her how to read and write, and he eventually buys her a brooch as a gift. Sometime later, Gilbert's unit is assigned to stage an attack on the enemy's headquarters, the success of which could mean the end of the war. Gilbert's unit suffers heavy casualties in the assault, but they can seize headquarters and signal the main force to attack. However, just as Gilbert sends the signal, he is shot by enemy soldiers, which horrifies Violet to her core. Continuing Violet's flashback, she is resolved to carry a wounded Gilbert to safety but is shot and hit with a grenade in the process, resulting in the loss of both of her arms. Gilbert tells Violet to leave without him and finally tells her that he loves her, but she doesn't understand his words. Defeated, the enemy army bombs their headquarters and Gilbert sacrifices his life to push Violet to safety. In the present, Violet returns to the battle site to search for Gilbert. Hodgins then arrives and tells her that Gilbert had entrusted her care to him in case anything happened to Gilbert. Violet returns to the post office with Hodgins but refuses to do any more ghostwriting work, worrying her co-workers. In her grief, Violet attempts to commit suicide but cannot go through with it. After helping Roland deliver letters and reading a letter sent to her by Erica and Iris, Violet comes to realize that the act of receiving a letter can bring someone joy. She returns to work, starting with ghostwriting a letter for Spencer, Leculia's brother. Violet returns to the post office and asks Hodgins if it is okay for a person like her to live on. Hodgins responds that what she had done in the war can never be undone, but that also applies to all of the good deeds she has done as an auto-memory doll. Violet arrives at a mansion where a seven-year-old girl named Anne lives with her wealthy but sickly mother. Anne's mother has hired Violet for seven days to write letters, but Anne is not told what the letters are about or who they are for. In addition, Anne is both mistrustful and fascinated by Violet, as she mistakenly believes her to be an actual living doll due to her prosthetic arms. Over the next week, Anne comes to accept Violet, but cannot accept being separated from her mother while the letters are written. After an angry outburst by Anne, Violet manages to calm Anne down and convince her not to blame herself for her mother's illness. With the intimate letters written finally, Violet leaves, and eventually, the mother dies. Afterward, and begins receiving letters from her mother written by Violet and eventually grows up to start a family of her own. Back at the post office, Violet reveals to her co-workers that the letters would be delivered to and on her subsequent birthdays for the next 50 years and is overcome with emotion at the thought of young and having to live all alone after her mother's untimely death. The CH Postal Company receives a request for a doll from the neighboring country of Trigal. However, the country is in a state of civil war between the warmongers and moderates. The request is from a soldier fighting on the front lines, but due to the danger, Hodgins refuses the request. Violet overhears and travels to Trigal to find the client, Aiden Field. Aiden is fighting for the moderate faction, but his squad is annihilated by the enemy and he is gravely wounded. Violet arrives by parachute and rescues him. Believing that he is mortally wounded, Aiden has Violet write farewell letters to his parents and his good childhood friend Maria, confessing his mutual love to her. With the letters complete, Violet comforts Aiden in his final moments as he pictures himself reuniting with Maria. Violet delivers the letters to Aiden's parents and Maria. Despite being saddened by Aiden's death, they thank Violet for delivering his final letters to them. Violet then breaks down in tears, apologizing for her inability to protect Aiden and help him return home safe and sound. Diet Fried is ordered to protect a special envoy who will be traveling to a conference to sign a peace treaty formally ending the war. Meanwhile, a rebel anti-peace faction led by General Merkulov plans to ambush the envoy to stall the peace talks. Katlia and Benedict accompany the envoy as they board a train to travel to the city of Distory. Meanwhile, Violet, returning from Trigal, notices several fires near the railroad. 
Upon learning that Catlia is on the train, Violet decides to accompany them for protection. However, the anti-peace rebels have already infiltrated the train, and after it leaves the station they stage an attack. Violet attempts to fight back, but is eventually restrained due to her refusal to kill anybody. Diet Fried rescues Violet, although he blames her for Gilbert's death and tells her that she has no reason to live. Violet counters that Gilbert's final order was for her to live on and that she regrets not being able to protect Gilbert. At that moment, a rebel fires a rifle grenade at Diet Fried, but Violet deflects the grenade with her prosthetic arms which begin to fall apart from the intensive effort. Violet continues to protect Diet Fried, losing one of her arms in the process. However, the train approaches a bridge, and General Merkulov reveals that the bridge has been rigged to explode as a backup plan before leaping off the train. Violet and Benedict go to remove the bombs, and Violet sacrifices her other arm in the process. With the envoy safe, the party continues to the peace talks, where Leidenschaftlich and Gatariki officially sign a peace treaty to end the war. Upon returning to Leiden, a popular event called the Air Show, where planes are loaded with letters that are released in the sky to rain down all over the country, is being revived due to the peace. While Violet's co-workers are writing letters to submit, Catlia suggests she write a letter to Gilbert. However, Violet cannot find the words to say. She is then invited by Diet Fried to visit his and Gilbert's mother. She assures Violet that she does not blame her for her youngest son's death and that he lives on inside her heart, even if the memories are painful to recall. As Violet leaves, Diet Fried notes that she's become fully independent thanks to Gilbert's kind and selfless dedication and teachings. Now inspired, Violet writes a letter to Gilbert for the air show. In it, she tells Gilbert how she's learned so much as an auto-memory doll, and that she plans to keep on living in the hopes that she'll meet him again so she can tell him that she now understands the words I love you a little more. Through this, she finally comes to terms with Gilbert's loss, though choosing to believe he is still alive. Thank you for watching and check out the other videos we made for you. Please subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. It gives us the motivation to do more videos for you.